Intelligence Committee has just released a Democratic Party memo countering Republican claims of FBI surveillance abuses. That's despite objections from the White House, which earlier said the memo should not be released as it contains sensitive material. Now, it relates to the ongoing probe into alleged Russian meddling in the 2016 American presidential election. Now, the latest document accuses the Republicans of trying to undermine the FBI. That's after the Republican memo earlier this month accused the FBI and the Justice Department of securing a warrant to spy on Donald Trump's presidential campaign. All right, now, after the memo was released, Donald Trump tweeted the Democrat memo response on government surveillance abuses is a total political and legal bust. He went on to say that the FBI failed to disclose that the notorious Trump dossier was paid for by the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party. We should mention that it was partially paid for by them. Now, according to the Republicans, the warrant to spy on the Trump campaign was based on unverified claims made in that dossier written by the former British spy Christopher Steele. However, according to the Democrat memo, the FBI probe long predated the receipt of Steele's information. Now, for some insight on this story, we can now bring in political analyst John Griffin. Thanks for being with us here on RT International. Um, what a day. I mean, the memo wars continue, I guess. So, um, as we just heard, Donald Trump claims this Democratic memo actually vindicates him and confirms that the surveillance against him was illegal. Um, I don't think the Democrats see it that way. Do you think he's right? Well, yes, he's absolutely correct, because in the Democrat memo, which is a few pages long, uh, all, they, all they do is say that they started their investigation without evidence, seven weeks to be precise. Prior to getting the Steele dossier, they started their investigation. If you remember at the time, Senator Dianne Feinstein said, we have to start an investigation to find out why we have to investigate. Never before in the annals of jurisprudence have you ever seen an investigation start without probable cause, without sufficient evidence. So they essentially admitted to not having evidence and to pursuing this investigation without evidence. Uh, and to sim In other words, they got lucky with the Steele uh, dossier, at least they thought they did, and they used that seven weeks in. So you're not talking about a long period of time between the time that the Democrats initiated this investigation and they used the Steele dossier. It's not an eternity here. Now, this document claims that the Republican memo was a transparent effort to undermine the FBI, the special counsel, and the Congress investigations, and that it risks public exposure of sensitive sources for no legitimate purpose. Do you think that these are fair accusations? No, because the Democrats have advocating releasing the same quote unquote sensitive sources when it vilifies and targets Republicans. This is simply a partisan attempt to neutralize the, uh, the extreme series of uh, instances of corruption here that have been exposed by Republican efforts. Mm -hmm. If you look at what the FBI did, for example, with Clinton, uh, they essentially let Clinton off the hook for divulging major classified information to the public through her servers. So this is not something that the, uh, that the Republicans have done to the FBI. This is a culture of corruption at the FBI, and the FBI has done this to itself. Now, one of the key disputes here is the role of the controversial Trump, or actually I should say Steele dossier, written by Christopher Steele, which the Republicans claim was the main reason for the FBI probe. Um, the, even the Republican memo states that it was actually information from George Papadopoulos that started that probe. So how important is this document actually? The Steele dossier, that mean. Well, it was very important. It, the, the Democrat rebuttal, all it says is that the Steele dossier wasn't used until seven weeks into the investigation. That's actually a very short window of time. What that means is they didn't have sufficient evidence to start their investigation. They started their investigation and then latched on to the Steele dossier in order to make their, uh, make their erroneous claims that uh, Trump was somehow selling out U.S. elections to Russia. Now, that's even worse than basing the entire investigation on the Steele dossier. That's essentially saying, well, look, we, we lucked out. We got this Hillary-funded Steele dossier midway in, and we put everything around that. Well, that doesn't make a, a better or stronger argument 
uh, that that Russia hacked U.S. elections. And as a matter of fact, the entire Democrat rebuttal is essentially a series of no, it isn't, uh, of contradictions, of contrarian claims. They're saying no, it isn't. No, we didn't do this. No, we didn't abuse U.S. intelligence gathering processes. But yes, they did. And it wasn't just Carter Page. There were multiple instances of unmasking, improper unmasking of Trump officials, of Trump campaign officials. So this is not something that is a, a, that is a new problem. It's an ongoing culture of corruption. And all the Democrat memo does is call more attention to it. Now, it's interesting that, um, you know, Russian investigation aside, it's easy to say that this is just partisan politics playing out in Washington, D.C. But the memo was actually released by the House Intelligence Committee, which is controlled by the Republicans, and they unanimously voted, the entire committee, to release it twice. Um, so how much of this is partisan bickering and how much of this is political maneuvering? Um, what does this all really mean? Oh, no question. A good percentage, a good percentage of this is partisan bickering, uh, hands down, concede. Uh, however, that doesn't negate the factual content of the Republican memo and the many instances of established uh, abuse of the FBI and abuse of FISA that were demonstrated by the Republicans prior to the Nunes memo. So we're dealing, for example, uh, the, the national security advisor under Obama going in to the office, entering her code and unmasking improperly top campaign officials, okay? This is not something that is just about Carter Page. It's not just about the Nunes memo. It's about a culture of corruption. Yes, this is taking place around political parties in an entirely contentious scenario, no doubt, but this is, this is not just partisan. It's about principle. And we need to get back to discussions about principle. All right. Uh, John Griffin, thanks for being with us on RT International. Uh, we'll have more news.